so our next speaker is Nikolai Tushinch. He's a product specialist, design verification at OneSpin Solutions. And he's going to talk about meeting the challenge, formal verification of an FPU. Nikolai joined the OneSpin team in 2016 and currently focused on the OneSpin 360 DV solution. Um, Nikolai holds a BS in industrial automation from uh, University of Galatai in Romania and a European Masters in Embedded Computing Systems from the uh, University in Kaiserlautern in Germany and uh, is also from the University of Southampton in the United Kingdom. And we've got a 15 minute talk now from Nikolai. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Mike. Uh, and hello, everybody. Do you hear me well? Yes. Yeah. So the talk I'm going to carry on is about uh, the challenge one of our customers had in verifying the floating point hardware in, in their environment. And uh, yeah, so basically starting with the floating point. Uh, okay, let me switch off slide. So here is the agenda for this talk. So we're going to talk a bit about the floating point arithmetic. Then we're going to switch like what are the solutions available in to functionally verif uh, do a functional verification of the FP hardware. And what is where the challenge can uh, come in and how formal verification uh, with the assertion based VAP developed by OneSpin can help. And also we're going to conclude with some uh, results and uh, a short summary on the talk. So moving forward. So floating point arithmetic is uh, compared to a fixed point arithmetic. It covers a wider range of values where you can uh, and has no loss of precision, higher accuracy, but it comes with the drawback of having a more complex hardware, which is, uh, as uh, previous speaker mentioned, is notoriously hard to verify with uh, simulation. We have this. Uh, half single double precisions where like the exponent is uh, we have a sine bit and exponent of uh, 5 8 11 and the mantissa which is gets bigger so yeah the total of 16 32 and 64 bits respectively for IEEE 754 half single and double precision and how do we do the functional verification and uh, what are the solutions we are having in uh, our days. So one traditional is the simulation. And uh, as uh, I have mentioned, so simulation is uh, something that cannot exhaustively verify. So exhaustive verification with simulation is not feasible. And it takes like one and a half year uh, engineer years to cover all scenarios. And uh, there are many implementation dependent corner cases. So that are really hard to cover. Uh, it was mentioned in the previous uh, the, uh, talk that also the sequential equivalence checking of RTL against a reference model. So uh, regarding this, so having a reference model uh, requires a detailed understanding of both implementations. And there are like reference models like standardized, like uh, C, C++, and these reference models needs adaptation. and uh, the effort to adapt them to verify uh, sequentially uh, the RTL imp hardware implementation of the floating point is uh, has little reusability. Let's put it like this. And the challenge we are we are facing. So uh, our customer in uh, in this case Exilinx has this uh, a lot of um, legacy designs for floating point implementation. And uh, they are kind of like uh, where, like, if I remember correctly, they're like uh, uh, running uh, late with a verification of this. So they kind of like said, uh, asked uh, if we can come with such a solution. So here we come with a formal assertion based verification IP. And uh, we worked jointly in order to de develop these solutions and uh, and yeah, so the main the main issues Xilinx had was to uh, in 
make this reusable for all these uh, uh, designs we have, which were like highly parameterizable, and they ran into convergence uh, convergence issues as well. And uh, what is the floating point assertion based verification IP from one spin? So it comes with a system Verilog package developed internally in one spin, which has a bunch of uh, a series of uh, IEEE, so it's fully compliant with the IEEE standard. And it, uh, yeah, it has these functions and uh, data types. The sweet point is that you don't need a reference model required. So, and the, the end user, which is the customer, needs doesn't require like a deep knowledge of uh, the implementation. So yeah, it is available. S uh, specific proof engines and strategies for arithmetic were developed, and also it allows you to the de is the debugger integrated with floating point data types. So, on the right of the slide, you can see the overall structure. Let's put it like this. So, in the center, you have a one spin formal tool, which needs as an input the floating point unit design, to which we instantiate the uh, the verification IP, and the user needs to specify to uh, parameterize uh, the properties which comes from the VAP delivered as a template. So it's really uh, requires less knowledge on uh, hardware implementation and it's quite intuitive to use. So yeah, and also if you get a proof, you get a full proof and if you get a debug, then you go and debug the, with a debugger integration. And uh, as a configuration, so this uh, verification IP is highly uh, configurable. So you user specifies the latency when the result is going to be available, the rounding mode he and the precisions and uh, the other stuff he wants to check with the verification IP. As I mentioned before, so the floating uh, point uh, assertion based verification IP is fully compliant with the IEEE standard. Uh, 754 supports half, single, and double precision formats. Format all the rounding modes and the exception flags are there. Uh, so the tininess of uh, before or after rounding and the uh, operations that are supported are the addition, subtraction, mult uh, multiplication, absolute value negation, and all comparison operations. And conversion functions are also included in the um, verification IP package. Highly customizable, uh, so user is can select between uh, single, half, double precision, and is uh, also intended for deviations from the standard in case the customer uh, add, add some functionality to the, regarding the, if, uh, the floating point. So how does this look? So as I mentioned, it was highly customizable, so in, when the user instantiates the formal verification IP, it uh, does the instantiation, then he kind of gets his hints where to do this. So please customize the coding of routing modes. So he, the user needs to, spe uh, to, to define the uh, coding of the routing mode. So in this case, for example, the case is the user can use the case statement, which is in the template and uh, specify that, for example, for rounding mode coded with zero, zero is nearest to even and then zero up or down and so on. So this is quite intuitive. How this, uh, yeah, moving forward, how the property template looks like. So you can see in this slide the, the property template, which comes at the instantiation of the VAP. And uh, yeah, so this, what user needs to do is just to specify what is the trigger. For example, in our case, in this example is the addition. So the trigger that uh, for the addition operations, the addition operation, the in this uh, IEEE add function, the user kind of specifies which are the operands and what is the rounding mode. Therefore, uh, specifies the latency cycles uh, needed to compute the result for the uh, hardware for the RTL. And also, uh, so 
I3P check result function is uh, checking the X system where log package, uh, floating point uh, package delivered to us, and the actual. So the actual result is uh, <coughs> the result computed by the, the uh, implementation. And also the supported flags. So in exact overflow, et, et cetera, are also, uh, user can specify what flags are, support, are supported in uh, the implementation. And also here is like the supported flow needs to be declared and so on. So and then just calls the uh, assert property and let the prover uh, do his job. And yeah, so the the packages has these functions and uh, types which are coming with the tool. Yeah, moving forward, returning back to because uh, this was a customer driven uh, project. So for Xilinx FPU, they, uh, the designs they had in house were like uh, supported addition, subtraction, multiplication. So the main focus initially was for on addition, subtraction and multiplication operations. And Tool found a previously undiscovered bug in the model interface constraints. And uh, general and specific scenarios assertions created, for example, like operations with signaling or quiet, not a number. Uh, design bugs previously found in simulation and emulation also already found. So uh, by the verification IP, found them within seconds. So yeah, this is how uh, Xilinx work uh, helped and to develop this and uh, moving forward. So and uh, the results coming. So initially we tested this on uh, floating point open course where for we took the FP 100, I guess, and the operations were like, we found one bug in the subtraction and two bugs in the multiplication. The setup effort was, uh, for example, yeah, by setup effort, I mean, uh, I mean, is to get, uh, to set up all these uh, properties, uh, latencies and operands and do the, uh, I mean, setting up the entire verification uh, IP in order to be able to instantiate and check. So runtime, you can see that uh, most of them are in range of one minute. And yeah, you get a full proof. We got a full proof for addition and uh, fails for subtraction and multiplication. In uh, Xilinx case, so as I mentioned there, you have uh, their IP verification, their design, sorry, supported addition, subtraction, multiplication. So the setup effort is, you can see the, discrepancy between the uh, setup effort from open course and Xilinx FPU. So in uh, Xilinx engineers uh, mainly uh, were like people who did not use formal and so on. So yeah, and it took a bit for them to get used to uh, set up the entire uh, environment. And also because they are like highly customizable, uh, the the designs from Xilinx, they needed to be constrained from interface in order for uh, to be checked. But the runtime, you can see it's in a range of minutes. So we got full proof for addition, subtraction, and multiplication. Uh, for multiplication, we found one bug. And after the bug was fixed, the runtime, we got a full proof within four minutes. So yeah, as I mentioned, the discrepancies due to the tool and floating point app familiarization constraint setup from interface. Uh, but uh, now the question came to that, uh, how do we know that the... Uh... Hi, Nik Nikolai, we're, we're gonna have to speed it up. You got one yes, sure, 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 it will take, I have to one more slide. So we use the quantify coverage metrics in order to see how much of the um, assertions, uh, how much of the uh, cov uh, code coverage is uh, covered by the checks provided with verification IP. And we ended up that uh, it's 50% uh, of the branches and uh, 99 of the statements are covered in verification IP. So the conclusion is the uh, floating point verification IP from one spin is compliant with it to standard, is easy to set up and use. Uh, excellent experience for Xilinx a few project, low effort, uncovered corner case bugs within seconds, exhaustive verification with full proofs within minutes. 
and it got high code coverage. And there are current limitations, so there is no support for division and square root yet. And uh, additional effort may be required to achieve full proofs in, ca in some cases. And I would like to thank you, the Xilinx folks and my colleagues from OneSpin as well. And I guess that's all I had. Thank you very much, Nicola. Uh, sorry to rush you at the end. Uh, any questions from Bristol? Um, just, uh, just one quick question. You've obviously applied this to FPU, but the, uh, does it apply more generically to other types of blockers where, where you can provide a library of um, assertions that people can use for formal? Uh, I didn't get the question. Could you apply this to blocks other than an FPU? Blocks that don't have an a FPU? Blocks other than an FPU? No, the it's concept of a library. The concept of a library with assertion IP. Uh, they, are, they are targeted for FPU. Okay. There's one question in Bruno. No, sorry. One question from Cambridge, please. Hello. Um, yeah, I got a question about the um, photopot multiplier example shown by your customer. Um, what position was that? Um, and have you tried it with? A double position FMA and how long did it take if approved? Uh, the Xilinx uh, customer used uh, half precision. So have you got an example of a double position proof? Uh, no, I've, I'm afraid no, there is no double precision. The support it is, but it's uh, double precision, no. Right. Single, uh, single and half precision, yes. Uh, do you do you have any examples of uh, things like double position uh, flow support divide or uh, uh, fuse multiple ads? Oh yeah, so how many rounding modes is that, that these half position have as well? Uh, so we support uh, all of the rounding modes. If I got yes, it clear. In the example you, you stated where you had a full proof for, um, for your customer, which rounding modes did they support? Uh, I'm not aware because uh, the work was uh, carried by my colleagues. Okay, all right. Thanks. I, I cannot answer the question on what rounding mode is used for the multiplication. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you. Okay. Right, thank you very much, Nikolai. Thank you.